Now we're going to do an example where we have a mixed constraint. So we're going to maximize f x y is equal to x y subject to x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0. And remember that the zeroth step is to make sure that the inequalities are going in the proper direction. So really the constraints will be x squared, y squared is equal to 1, negative x is less than or equal to 0, and negative y is less than or equal to 0. So now we check the non-degenerate constraint qualification. Well, the full Jacobian is going to be equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Those are the G constraints. My H constraint is going to be giving me 2X, 2Y. Well, at most, two of these equations are binding at any one time. Since, of course, x equals 0, y equals 0 means x squared plus y squared is equal to 0. And if x is equal to 0, we have to have that y is equal to 1. And if y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So we will have all two by two submatrices are of full rank. That is, if I have x binding, I'll have one, zero, zero, two. If I have y binding, I'll have zero, one, 2, 0. And if I have x and y binding, well, I can't have x and y binding and satisfy this constraint, and so I don't, I just ignore it. And in both of these cases, I have full rank. So the second thing is the, we now form the Lagrangian. I have x, y, I have one equality parameter. Uh, well, no, I have two inequalities, and I have one equality, so let's just call that mu. So this is going to be equal to x, y minus lambda 1 times negative x minus lambda 2 times negative y minus mu times x squared plus y squared minus 1. And let's simplify that by getting rid of two negatives to get plus lambda 1x plus lambda 2y minus mu x squared plus y squared minus 1. Now we write down the first order conditions. We have partial of L with respect to X is going to be Y plus lambda 1 minus 2 mu X, and that's got to be equal to 0. Partial of L with respect to Y now is going to be equal to X plus lambda 2 minus 2 mu Y, and that's got to be equal to 0. I have to have that 
the, the complementary slackness conditions have to hold. So I have lambda x is equal to lambda 2 y is equal to 0. I have to have my equality constraint. So I have x squared plus y squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And then I have, of course, the constraints on my Lagrange multipliers for the inequalities. And of course I have x has got to be greater than 0 and y must be greater than 0 because of the constraint. So now let's find the critical points. Well, so the first thing that we really want to look at is uh, dl dx, right? Um, well, actually, first we're going to look at, well, what happens if uh, we're going to have x is equal to 0, right? So if x is equal to 0, then what has to happen? Then y plus lambda 1 has to be equal to 0. But notice that y and lambda 1 are both positive numbers. So y is equal to 0. Well, if x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, I can't possibly satisfy x squared plus y squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So we have contradiction. So similarly, we'll also have so this gives us x is greater than 0, and we'll also have that y is strictly greater than 0. And that's really helpful, because that tells us that lambda 1 and lambda 2 now have to be 0. And we can reduce this down to the following system. So now our equations become y minus 2 mu x is equal to 0, x minus 2 mu y is equal to 0, and that's just the falling matrix equation. I have 1 minus 2 mu, and I have minus 2 mu 1, and, and I'm changing the order up a bit, but this is all true. So this matrix equation has to hold, right? And the only way for that to hold is uh, if x equals y is equal to 0, and that can't happen. We've already seen that can't happen. Or the determinant of this guy has to vanish, right? It has to be singular. So 1, negative 2 mu, negative 2 mu, 1, has to be equal to 0. Well, if we work out what the determinant is, this is going to be 1 minus 4 mu squared is equal to 0. And therefore, mu is equal to plus or minus 1 half. Well, if mu is equal to plus or minus 1 half, then, so if mu is equal to 1 half, then this equation becomes y minus x is equal to 0, or y is equal to x. If y is equal to x, then we have that 2y squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And so y is equal to plus or minus the square root 2 over 2. On the other hand, if mu is equal to negative 1 half, we have this equation will be y plus x is equal to 0. This equation will turn into that. And therefore, y is equal to negative x. We'll still have 2y squared minus 1 is equal to 0, but we get... So we'll get the same number for y. And so this gives us the following points. So the critical points are... In this situation, they have the same sign, so we've got square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, 
one half for mu, and then I have negative square root two over two, square root two over two, one half. For mu is negative one half, I have a different sign of, yeah, a different sign, so I'll have square root two over two, negative square root two over two, negative one half, and negative square root two over two, square root two over two, negative one half. So those are all the critical points. And now we identify the maximum, step five. But, uh, but we're already in good shape here because actually we can automatically cancel these out because x and y have to be both greater than or equal to zero. Right, so we can exclude these immediately and so the maximum is just going to be at square root two over two, which is going to be square root two over two times square root two over two, which is one half and the max is at square root two over two, square root two over two. And that's the only maximum that we'll get.